Dugan. You say, and I quote, I don't feel that it's appropriate to increase the penalty on the basis of the number of images or prepubescent victims, meaning little kids, as the guidelines require, because these circumstances exist in many cases, if not most, and don't signal an especially heinous or egregious child pornography offense, end quote. I just want to ask you about that because I just have to tell you I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. We're talking about eight-year-olds and nine-year-olds and 11-year-olds and 12-year-olds. He's got images of these. The government said added up to over 600 images, gobs of video footage of these children. But you say this does not signal a heinous or egregious child pornography offense. Help me understand that. What word would you use if it's not heinous or egregious? What, what, how would you describe it? Thank you, Senator, for letting me address the concern that you've put forward based on the record that you've reviewed. As a judge who is a mom and has been tasked with the responsibility of actually reviewing the evidence, the evidence that you would not describe in polite company, the evidence that you are pointing to, discussing, addressing in this context is evidence that I have seen in my role as a judge. And it is heinous, it is egregious. What a judge has to do is determine how to sentence defendants proportionately consistent with the elements that the statutes include, with the requirements that Congress has set forward. Unwarranted sentencing disparities is something that the Sentencing Commission has been focused on for a long time in regard to child pornography offenses. All of the offenses are horrible. All of the offenses are egregious. But the guidelines, as you pointed out, are being departed from even with respect to the government's recommendation. The government, in this case and in others, has asked for a sentence that is substantially less than the guideline penalty. And so what I was discussing was that phenomenon, that the guidelines in this area are not doing the work of differentiating defendants as the government itself indicated in this very case. And so that's what I was talking about, but I want to assure you, Senator, that I take these cases very seriously, that these cases include the notion by many defendants that the folks at issue, that the defendants themselves are collecting these images on the internet. They're terrible things that have happened, but they're not involved, say the defendants. They're not focused on you know, what is actually happening to the children. And so part of my sentencings was about redirecting the defendant's attention. It's not just about how much time a person spends in prison. It's about understanding the harm of this, this behavior. It's about all of the other kinds of restraints that sex offenders are ordered rightly to live under at the end of the day. The sentences in these cases include not only prison time, but restraints on computer use, sometimes for decades. Restraints on ability to go near children, sometimes for decades. All of these things judges consider in order to affect what Congress has required, which is 
a sentence that is sufficient but not greater than necessary let me just to promote you. the purposes of sure. punishment. Yeah. Well, let me just ask you about that last point, because you've said this a couple of times now, the, the, the sentences that Congress require. Congress wanted the guidelines to be mandatory. Congress wrote the guidelines in this case. They wanted them to be mandatory. They gave the courts factors to consider to choose between the sentencing range. Congress wanted you to choose between 97 and 121 months. That's what Congress wanted. The Supreme Court in Booker said that the, sentence, the sentencing guidelines would be discretionary, so the Supreme Court gave you the discretion. But if we're talking about what Congress has wanted, Congress wanted them to be mandatory. My only point in raising that is just to say that you had discretion in these cases, and you used your discretion to, to choose the sentences that you did. Let me ask you about some of the things, though, that you said, because you said this this morning, and I, I appreciated it, how you want to direct the defendants. You want to get them to own up to what they've done in these cases. And I thought that was powerful, and I thought it was right. But let me just ask you about what you said to this defendant. You said to this defendant, for whom you sentenced to only three months in prison, that your collection, I'm quoting you, your collection at the time that you were caught was not actually as large as it seems. The government felt the need to respond to you on the record. They said the government doesn't believe that it's appropriate to just disregard the number of images, that the number of images can be appropriate. And indeed, in this case, the defendant has amassed an extremely large collection of child pornography. But you disregarded that. You also told the defendant, you said this, this seems to be a case where you were fascinated by sexual images involving what were essentially your peers. And then you went on to say the defendant was merely trying to satisfy his curiosity. Curiosity is your word. One more thing on this, same idea. You said you were viewing, this is you to the defendant, you were, you were viewing sex acts between children who were not much younger than you. And this whole discussion is about why you're only giving him three months. Judge, he was 18. These kids are eight. I don't see in what sense they're peers. I've got a nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a 16-month-old at home, and I live in fear that they will be exposed to, let alone exploited, in this kind of material. I don't understand you saying to him that they're peers and that, therefore, you were viewing sex acts between children who are not much younger than you and that that's, that's somehow a reason to only give him three months. Help me understand this. Senator, I don't have the record of that entire case in front of me. What I recall with respect to that case is that unlike the many other child pornography offenders that I had seen as a judge and that I was aware of in my work on the Sentencing Commission, this particular defendant had just graduated from high school. And some of perhaps not all when you were looking at the records, but some of the materials that he was looking at were older teenagers, were older victims. And the point, Senator, is that you, you said before, the probation office is making recommendations and they do so on a case-by-case -case basis. That is what Congress requires. That, it, this is not done at the level of But you had one, discretion, Judge. You admit that, right? I just want to be clear. Senator, sentencing is a discretionary act of a judge, but it's not a numbers game. It's not I, – I understand that Congress wanted the guidelines to be mandatory. The Supreme Court in 2005 determined that they couldn't be, in an opinion by Justice Scalia – determined that they couldn't be, and Congress since then has not come back to amend them or to change them or to make them mandatory again. And so there is discretion at sentencing, and when you look at the sentencing statutes, Congress has given the judges not only the discretion to make the decision, but required judges to do so on an individualized basis taking into account not only the guidelines, but also various factors, including the age of the defendant, the circumstances of the defendant, the terrible nature of the crime, the harm to the victims. All of these factors are taken into account, and the probation office assists the court 
in determining what sentence is sufficient but not greater than necessary. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.